going to continue with Hebrews chapter 5. <coughs> I don't know what's going to go on with the sinking thing. It's probably not going to be right, but <coughs> with me, uh, the audio on the video is syncing up, but oh well. Still going to have to work on a lot of things. So, Hebrews chapter 5 says, For every high priest is taken from among men. Every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins who can have compassion on the ignorant and on <coughs> on them that are out of the way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity <coughs> and so he talks about how Jesus is the high priest and so he's kind of explaining now about the high priests in the Old Testament and um, how they were they were also uh, you know they were also men unlike the Lord Jesus who is God in the flesh and so they were you know subject to their own sins for every high priest is taken from among men, so he is a man, is ordained for men, and things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Okay. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man maketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself. Uh, I've got to work on that camera here. Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son today, I, have I begotten thee? <coughs> I don't know what's getting stuck in my throat there. It's really bothering me. <coughs> okay, this is terrible. He said, So no man takes the honor unto himself but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So they give the honor to God. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto them, unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Saying that this is speaking of Jesus. Okay, so showing some similarities between Christ and the high priests and um, also the differences. As he has said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So I guess he's saying that this Old Testament reference is referring to Jesus as well. For who in the days of his flesh, or who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers, and see this is pink in my Bible because it's uh, a verse about prayer, and, you know, these are yellow because this is supposed to be, you know, God speaking or, you know, whatever prophet wrote it at that time, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's a dialogue, basically, in a sense. So, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him, that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared...
Though he, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, the soul speaking of Jesus. And, you know, in verse 7 we do read about answered prayer. And it talks about, you know, Jesus and his humanity, how he uh, was weak. Though he were a son, the capital S there, Yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. And so basically, I guess by his nature, even though he was like, you know, granted everything, you know, because he is God. He's the Son of God by nature, but yet he became a man, and he humbled himself, and he still, he suffered as men. And, you know, even though he didn't necessarily have to do that, uh, but, you know, he chose to willingly do that. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. And that's interesting what it says about him being made perfect, and I'd like to look more into that. Um, I mean, I guess it's talking about his resurrection and his... Oh, I forgot to take off that little Lodgy uh, logo. I don't know. Can I still do that while I'm recording? <laughs> that kind of bothers me. I meant to take that off, and then I forgot about it. There we go. It's gone. A little... Anyway, um, so I guess that about him being made perfect, I'm thinking about like when he was, uh, you know, I guess him being at the right hand of God, you know, him ascending, re being resurrected, and after his ascension, I guess, I don't know, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all of them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when the same time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such and have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is, un is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So it seems like a little bit of a rebuke here to the people that he's writing to. They're not really up to his standards of what he thinks they should be. And so I guess, you know, the Hebrews, there were a lot of them that were, you know, I guess, you know, I mean, there was a lot of them that still probably didn't trust fully in Jesus in their heart. And so, I mean, a lot of what we've read previously expresses that, how he has to hit on how, who Jesus is and what he did so much. Um, just reaffirm that. And also, you know, maybe even the ones who have trusted in Jesus, they're just uh, going along with their old ways, maybe with some of their previous beliefs about their rituals and stuff, or maybe uh, they are, you know, given to the flesh, but I don't know exactly what's going on here, but he's disappointed. And again, the whole thing so far, I mean, it's all about Jesus, you know, which is awesome. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as need of milk. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory here. It's pretty straightforward. It says, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. 
And so that sounds kind of like, reminds me in, in Timothy or uh, Titus or whatever one it is where it talks about like an elder sh or, you know, not a novice unless he be lifted up or something. Uh, so it's not good for someone who is newly saved to go around teaching everything, I guess. But strong meat belongeth to them that are f of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Who by reason of use. That kind of makes me think that <clears throat> by reason of use. Okay, okay. So as he's saying that by by the use of these strong doctrines, by the use of the word of God, we can we can use that to discern good and evil. So it's interesting in chapter five here, like half of it he's talking about how Jesus is the high priest and he's going back to the Old Testament explaining, you know, the high priest and and the similarities and differences with Christ, and then like the last part of it here is just like a rebuke or whatever to him. So uh, not a whole lot here. I don't know what else to really say about this. There's, I mean, definitely stuff I could look into more. It talks about Jesus and his humanity. I mean, a lot of these where I've had, like, the dialogue, he's quoting the Old Testament saying, you know, this is speaking of Jesus and stuff. There's a, there's a lot of those, like, almost in every chapter or something like that. So he's really just hammering it in to the Hebrews that, that the Bible spoke of Jesus. <clears throat> so... I'm just going to stop that here. I know that the next chapter is a controversial one because I've looked at it over and over again, this section over here. I, that's why I have some of this uh, marked here. I'm not sure why I had this marked in this box. But... Hmm. I don't know. I don't remember what I was thinking there. But I want to thank that I have this marked over here because this is a controversial passage. I don't know. Anyways, we'll go through the next the next chapter in the next video. But all right, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. God bless. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. This is the gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth, took, him, took on himself the nature of a man. He was crucified and died for our sins, and he rose again on the third day. I want to ask you the most important question of your life. Your joy or sorrow for all eternity depends on your answer to this question. Are you saved? This has nothing to do with how good you are or if you go to a building called a church, but are you born again? In John chapter 3 verse 7, Jesus said, you must be born again. How can you be born again? First of all, you must realize that you are a sinner. Sin is anything in us that does not express or is contrary to the holy nature of our Creator, God. For instance, have you ever lied or cheated or stolen? 
These are all contrary to the character of God. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 when it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. For the wages or the payment of sin is death. We read that in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. But God loved you so much he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Jesus had to shed his blood and die, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Although we cannot understand how, God said, My sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus, and he died in our place. He became our substitute. It is true, God cannot lie. God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. In Acts chapter 17, verse 30, to repent means to turn around, to confess and forsake one's sins. It's a change of mind and a change of heart and a change of attitude that abhors sins. It agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees that Jesus died for us on the cross. In Acts chapter 16, verses 30 and 31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1 verse 12. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can, but shall be saved. If you would like to learn more about sin, salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ, or anything else concerning the Christian faith, please visit www.acceptgbconverted.com.